Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now Pastor Stewart. Well, welcome back to the Acts Ministry broadcast. We're in the book of Jonah, and we went over chapter 1 and chapter 2 on yesterday, how Jonah was trying to flee from the presence of the Lord, and that is impossible. God is everywhere. Psalms 139 says, the night and the day is the same with God doesn't matter where we are. God sees us. The Bible says man loves darkness because his deeds are evil. Well, when you realize that the darkness and the day is the same with God. To do it in darkness, God still sees it. To do it in secrecy, God still sees it. And it's going to be revealed. It's going to be revealed. Every single sin must be accounted for, must be paid for. And if we did not Allow the Lord Jesus to have that sin, give our lives to him so his blood can wash away that sin, then we have to pay for our sins. And the Bible says the wages of sin, the cost of it, the price of sin is death. Here's Jonah. The fish regurgitate Jonah. He gets on dry land. Wow. Being in the belly of the whale for three days. Now Jonah's out of the belly of the whale and he has a new attitude. He's out of out of the fish's belly. The Bible says the journey that was supposed to take three days, the city of Nineveh, three days, whether it's three days across or the city of Nineveh or three days to Nineveh, it was going to be three days. Jonah did it in one day. See, God knows us. He knows us. He knows everything about us. He knows what we're going to do. So sometimes we think we have arrived late, but since God is omniscient, all-knowing, He knew how long it was going to take us to get ourselves together. So God has factored all of that in. You know, sometimes we worry about, well, I'm going to be late for this and be late for that. And I'm behind on this. I'm behind on that. And and many times we're not careful. Satan gets into that. He gets into that. And what happens is that he causes us to move when we shouldn't move. Or he causes us to rush ahead and destruction comes. Uh, meaning right, good intentions, but bad action. You think, well, he spent three days in the belly of the whale. He's three days behind. Well, it was a three days journey. He did it in one day. God knows how to make it up because he knows us. He knows us. Let me say it like this where we can all understand it. God knows how many years you're going to act a fool. So when he has a destiny for you, he didn't factor all that in. So when God gets through with us, if we do not, resist the chastening of the Lord if we don't fight against what God is trying to do because what Jonah thought was punishment was really deliverance because if you hit that water without without the fish swallowing Jonah he drowns so if we don't resist what the potter is trying to do in our lives and that is what we talked about Jeremiah went to the potter's house the potters were forming a vessel on the wheel God is doing something in our lives. God is up to something. He's he's forming, he's shaping our, our lives. So he knows how long it's going to take for us to get ourselves together. And he got all that factored in. He didn't factor in our craziness, our, you know, our, our stupidity and all of that. So as long as we don't fight against God, we will end up being on time if we just surrender to him. You never go out smart, God. So in chapter 3, here's Jonah. He, he goes and... He preaches in the city of Nineveh. And guess what? When he's preaching in the city of Nineveh, the Ninevites proclaim a fast. And not only a fast for them, they proclaimed a fast for the animals and everything there. Now, listen to this. And he calls it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything let them not feed nor drink water now this was for three days three days because what jonah said in 40 days none of the is going to be destroyed so they went down in sackcloth and ashes or they repented the evil that they had done they had asked god for forgiveness and wanted god to forgive them so now Here's the city of Nineveh. Uh, This great revival takes place because of Jonah. Because Jonah goes in and preached the word of God. And now everything in the city is turned upside upside down. 
The people have a heart for God. They are fasting. They are praying. They are seeking God. In Jonah chapter 4, verse 1, verse 1 says this, But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. I want you to see this. This is an incredible lesson to learn here from this great holy prophet man of God. He's angry. He's upset because Jonah is still human. He's still in the flesh. And now what has happened in the whale's belly has worn off. Isn't that just like us? Isn't that like us that certain things happen and we're ready to give our lives to God and, and never look back because somebody died or we escaped death or whatever. Now we're ready to run for Jesus. But when that wears off, what is he saying to us? The one thing we must understand is that fear, fear can never be the foundation of a relationship. It must always be love. Fear will only last a certain amount of time, but love is greater than fear. So now Jonah been in the fish's belly for three days. He's out of the fish's belly and he's angry. And look what he says to God. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God, merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentest thee of the evil. Now, now, Jonah said, I know who you are. That's something that seemed like he should have been happy about, because we all want God to be gracious to us. We want God to be merciful to us. We want God to be long-suffering, slow to anger. We want God to have kindness, and we want God... To, to bless us and, and, and not destroy us. But see, Jonah's looking at it. He wants that for himself, but he doesn't want it for the people of Nineveh. Now, there's many things that we can see that he felt like the Ninevites, they were a wicked nation. They were a wicked nation. They deserve to be punished. This is what Jonah is thinking. But think about it. Let him that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Let him cast the first stone. So Jonah wants them destroyed. I guess he had forgot about him rebelling against God. He wants the Ninevite destroyed. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser, and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. It's amazing how self-righteous and self-condemning we can be even as the vessels of God. This is the man of God. This is a prophet of God. Now, now watch what he says. Watch what he says. He's upset because he wanted God to destroy these people. And verse 3 says, now, there, now, Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it's better for me to die than to live. Now, that's pretty powerful. Jonah is so angry. He said, I want to die. Just kill me. Why, why do you need to die? He is so upset that God is not going to destroy all these people that he wants to die. He wants to die. If you don't kill them, kill me. Wow. Now now, now we see how gracious God is. He don't realize it, but he's experiencing God's grace and God's mercy at that moment. Because that's, that's why I'm glad God is God. I don't want anybody else to be God but God. Because I'm telling you, if, if, if I know a few people that if they had been God, Jonah would have been dead. He would have he would have got his request. His request would have been granted. But thank God for his mercy and his love and his grace. And then God says something that is so powerful that I really want us to embrace because I believe in the 21st century it is so key. He says to Jonah in verse 4, Then said the Lord, Does thou well to be angry? God says to Jonah, Do you have a right to be angry? And that's pretty powerful. Now, if you go back to the book of Genesis, when God spoke to, spoke to Cain and asked Cain why he was angry, you see that God, this is, this is anger management that God has given us. So he wanted Jonah to just evaluate, why are you angry? 
So it says in verse 5, Jonah, so Jonah went out of the city, sat on the east side of the city, and there made him uh, a shelter, sat on, under it in the shadow till he, till he might see what would happen to the city. Jonah makes a place, makes him a little tent overlooking the city. He was sitting there waiting for God to destroy all of these people, to destroy these people. And God begins to try to, God begins to show Jonah the kind of attitude he had. And so what God did was he, he gave Jonah shade. He had a plant to grow, a plant to grow overnight. And it gave shade to Jonah because of the heat. And then what God did, he, he took away the plant, had a worm to smite the plant and take the plant away. And the Bible says the sun beat upon the head of Jonah and that he fainted and wished himself to die and said, it's better for me to die than to live. And God says to Jonah again, verse 9, does thou well to be angry for the plant? And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. Now, Jonah has lost it because he's talking to God. God says, why are you angry? Do you have a reason to be angry? Why are you so angry? And Jonah said, Jonah said he, had, Jonah said he was angry enough to die. Now, God begins to try to bring sense to, to, to Jonah. And this is what God says. Listen to this in the last two verses of the book of Jonah. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the plant for which thou hast not labored, neither made it, it grow, which came up in the night and perished in the night. God says to Jonah, uh, You have more pity on this plant that you didn't plant, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't uh, put it here. You didn't have anything to do with this plant growing, giving you shade. Then he says in verse 11, And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than 120,000 people that cannot discern between their right hand, their left hand, and also much cattle? God says to Jonah, you're more concerned about a plant than you are concerned about over 120,000 people, children, plus all the cattle, the livestock. Jonah wanted everything to die. He's sitting out there waiting for fire to fall from heaven. Now, if you think this is just Jonah, think about, think about the inner circle. Think about James and John. When they told, asked the Lord, shall we call fire down from heaven and consume the Samaritans. And Jesus said, you know not what spirit you have. He rebuked them. He corrected them. But we see Jonah here sitting and waiting for the city of Nineveh to be destroyed. The lesson we can learn from Jonah is that sometimes we have no pity, very little pity for others. But when it comes to us, we want the shade of life. And yes, even though he was a prophet, he was not exempt from being human. So we have to look at when God brings about punishment in our lives or chastisement. Is it punishment or is it deliverance? For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Stewart.